Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. And I know you guys see this on your timeline, and you think, oh my god, the ABK ruling has come down. No, we are still waiting at this moment in time for Judge Corley to rule on the Microsoft versus FTC hearing. However, today I do have a pretty good story, and it's kind of in the vein of everything. We're gonna talk about PlayStation. Now, a lot of people say that PlayStation they inspire organic growth and we hear this time and time again that the xbox they don't do organic growth they're buying up studios and they're paying their way into the market now sony they were not always the market leader and when they came in to this competition or I should say into this console market they were ruthless and a lot of people seem to forget the history of sony now i've been playing playstations for quite some time and i gotta say back in the day the system was crazy everybody owned a playstation but let's take a look at the politics behind the playstation and how they became number one now this is coming from j rock like usual i'll link it in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself now he produced a video and i guess this was some type of g4 documentary or some type of documentary on the playstation and we see that this organic growth is a complete lie so without further ado we're just gonna play this i'm gonna come back at the end of it give you guys my comments and we're just gonna talk about it the biggest feature of playstation was going to be the real time 3d graphics technology at the time the playstation was a faster console than anything out in the market it could push more polygons it gave developers a larger toolbox to work with than any of the competing consoles. And of course, it used CD-ROMs. After watching the failure of systems like the 3DO very closely, <laughs> Sony realizes that processing power alone isn't enough to come out on top in the world of video games. We looked at uh, the business models um, of all of the companies uh, that have been in the space or tried to get in the space, and we asked ourselves, could we do this better? The biggest problem that we had was that the market in 1993 was dominated by Sega and Nintendo. They pretty much had it sewn up between them. So any new entrant into the market had to do something pretty dramatic and pretty special. Sure, we had the system. Sure, we had the hardware. But it doesn't mean anything unless you have games. Nintendo already had Miyamoto, and he was a genius. Sega, they already had their arcade games. But Sony, what do they have? They don't have a genius developer or arcade games they're making, so they had to find software somewhere. We knew that in order to be successful, we had to capture the hearts and minds of the developers and the publishers equally. So what they did was they went on a very aggressive campaign to all the developers. At first, a lot of developers were dead set against it, mainly because it was high technology. It was 3D, and a lot of game companies were still making 2D games, and they said, that's going to be so expensive to make 3D games. No way we can afford it, and it's going to be very hard. Part of Sony's original sales pitch to push game developers into developing for the PlayStation was the ease and freedom that developing for the system would offer. The downside is that the PlayStation used a very expensive development kit based on Sony's line of news computer workstations. This came to an end at CES 1994. Developers from Psygnosis asked SN Systems, a UK-based development studio, to design a simple and more cost-effective workstation. SN Systems developed a PC-based development kit for the PlayStation and won over Sony executives during a presentation at the event. Sony abandoned their own internal development kits in favor of SN Systems and Sony abandoned their own internal development kits in favor of SN Systems and Sony abandoned their own internal development kits in favor of SN Systems. So not even their development kits are organic. And ordered over 600 development kits at CES alone. SN Systems and Sony continued to work together on future consoles like the PlayStation 2. Partnership proved so successful that Sony purchased SN Systems in 2005 and they continue to develop software for the PlayStation line of consoles. Sony does everything it can to round up third-party developers to support the PlayStation and is able to sign 250 in Japan alone. The first task for me was managing the third party department to recruit and help support third parties like Namco. My target was to get as many 
publishers and many popular title franchises to become available on PlayStation. Sony also spends $48 million to purchase Psygnosis, the European developer behind Lemmings, and changes its name to Sony Interactive Entertainment. PlayStation picks up more and more sales thanks to powerful hardware and a collection of exclusive games and other hits. Ridge Racer is a driving game. Okay, the final lap, hang in there! So we had a driving game, and then I wanted a fighting game. So why not? I went out and hunted for that. I don't tell Shinden. If you look at the sexiness and the appeal of what Toshinden was about as a fighting game, it was fabulous. It was a major, major hit. Wow. In 1996, we came out and launched Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot was a terrific launch title. Defined PlayStation as a platform. And it was about a year or so after the launch of PlayStation. One detective at Squaresoft said he's gonna make Final Fantasy on PlayStation. At that point, I felt that the old ties will change. The PlayStation proves to be a juggernaut that plows through all competition. So that is just insane. I don't want to hear any Sony PlayStation fan saying that Microsoft is not organic. When Sony itself is clearly not organic. We just saw the history of how the PlayStation got into the market. And I got to be honest with you guys, that brought back a lot of memories for me. That PlayStation system was something special in my childhood. The games at that time, it was something that we just didn't see before and anyone back then that owned a playstation will tell you the same that it was just so much fun but let's be honest they are not about organic growth now as you can see on the screen j-rock also posted that they got a publisher that was responsible for 40 percent of the game distribution in the region but sony is organic let's watch this clip 95 signaled the beginning of their second glorious period you could easily make the case for Psygnosis as Europe's top games company in the 32-bit era. Some sources give them, at various points, responsibility for 40% of all the region's games sold in certain periods of the 32-bit era. Psygnosis rode very high indeed. Several of the most famous games on the PlayStation bear their name. So there you have it. The proof is indisputable. It's right there for you to see. And Sony has continued to buy studios. They bought Bungie, they bought Insomniac. You saw the list of uh, studios in the previous video. They bought a lot of studios. Now, I'm not saying that Sony doesn't have great games. They do have great games. This organic growth that fans like to spew is a bunch of nonsense. Sony continues to money hat games. We know this with the recent Final Fantasy game. This game is just on the PlayStation. And in fact, they're suffering from this. The second week sales are really down on that game. It's not selling a lot of copies now. The first week out, it sold a lot of copies. And you guys have seen all the videos online of people saying that you could clear the game by just pressing the X button. And also how it goes down to 720p resolution to maintain 60 FPS. There's a lot of issues with that game. I haven't played it, so I can't speak on it personally i'm just saying what i've seen in the media and what i've seen from fans itself and you know the game seems like it's okay but it's like a movie and the action seems like it's so dull you just can press the x button and you can progress now i've seen some other people trying to debate this but there's apparently certain perks that you can apply to your characters that allow them to dodge automatically so i do believe it is correct that you can clear this game or play a big part of this game by just pressing the x button now that's neither here nor there the fact that they made this game exclusive on the PlayStation actually hurt the game because PC players are not able to play this game. Xbox gamers are not able to play this game, which surely would have helped with their sales. And clearly they need it because the drop-off in the second week 
is crazy. Now, as we continue to scroll through the comments here, you can see that one of the companies that Sony acquired had multiple IPs. Uh, someone says, wow, famous IPs that are used to this day and sell gangbusters. We go down to Cold Eastwood. He says, the moral of the story, PlayStation bought most of all their studios. Studios make games, not Sony. Xbox bought most of their studios. Studios make games, not Microsoft. And I think he hit the nail on the head here. It is these studios. It's these developers that give us these experiences that we love. This is the truth of the matter. And to compete, you got to have the best studios. You have to have the best games. And in today's climate, it is acquiring studios. Sony is doing it too. You guys act like Sony's not a part of this too. They bought Insomniac. They bought Bungie. Now, Sam Matino says they bought 17 studios, killed Sega, took their engineer Mark Cerny to build them a console. Their entire existence during the PS1 era was built on third-party games they did not create or own. They're still making multi-plat games exclusive and still buying studios. Organic. And these are all facts. These are all facts. We saw in that documentary that Sony abandoned their own development system in favor of another one. That's not organic. Not even their operating system, not even their dev kits were built by them. At least we know Microsoft did that because we know the whole deal with Windows. J-Rock goes on to say even their mascots weren't theirs. I don't know. I think that's because they use Crash Bandicoot. I know that they use Crash Bandicoot a lot. Now this one guy's comment kind of had me rolling here. John Gotez said, let me just actually blow this up here. Now I'm going to try to read this next comment. Uh, it's all over the place, but he goes on to say that buying companies doesn't make the growth inorganic. If you've helped the studio and published exclusive titles and are the reason they're known to the most of their audience, then buy them. Well, that's organic growth, my friend. You're growing something, nurturing them and creating a symbiotic relationship ridiculous it's an entirely different thing when two-thirds of people enjoy a game on your console from a developer than someone else who has nothing to do with the ip or company at the very least to do with their growth or popularity that ends up you buying them in hopes of inconveniencing long-standing fans into moving away from the whole ecosystem they'd rather play on now ugh, i'm not even going to read the rest of it it's just ridiculous this guy's just trying to cope here let's just be honest it is not organic growth buying these studios it is not and i don't have a problem with it i understand that these companies have to compete they're competing for our bottom dollar they want us to play their games so they're going out and buying studios that make great games there's nothing wrong with that my problem is is that sony fans say microsoft is buying everybody up and they're not organic like sony doesn't do the same thing and it's that type of hypocrisy that is just not tolerable I just can't tolerate it anymore because it's a bunch of nonsense. Let these companies compete on even playing fields. And that is what Microsoft is trying to do. And that's why this whole ABK merger thing is very important to the Microsoft ecosystem. It's important to me as a fan because I want these games in my Game Pass service. And I know there's other Xbox gamers that want this as well. I also think it's good for the company overall because it's going to increase their revenue. They're going to make more money off of these games. So it's just a good business deal. And if Sony was in the position to do it, they would be doing the same thing. And you guys wouldn't be crying about them buying Activision. You guys would be shouting from the top of the hills what a great deal this is. And you'd be saying something like, just buy a PlayStation. I know that's what you guys would be doing. So the hypocrisy is just... It's just crazy. Now, before I wrap this up, I know you guys are waiting for an update on the Microsoft FTC case. Now, today is Sunday as I'm doing this video. Monday, I believe, is the last day that the judge can release her verdict, allowing Microsoft to close this deal before the 18th of July, which is their closing date. So I am expecting a ruling to come down tomorrow. So hopefully that will happen. I'll come back on the channel. Of course, we're going to dig deep into that. So I would say to you guys out there, be patient. The ruling is coming. I know I'm waiting just like you guys. It's crazy, the anticipation and the anxiety that we're getting from this whole ordeal. But I'll be honest with you guys, it's almost over. And I really do think we're going to get a decision on Monday. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about today's story. What do you think about Sony's organic growth or the lack of it? A lot of people use this against Xbox saying that they're buying up games all the time. But when we look at the evidence in today's video, we see that Sony has been doing this 
from the very start. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.